We're going to get ready to put the new steering gear gearbox in. I'm just going to go ahead and remove the pitman arm now. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and remove the steering knuckle right here. I'm going to remove the uh, high pressure side line, disconnect it, and be prepared you're going to get some oil that coming out of here. So bring the line up and out of the way. As soon as you bring it up higher than the uh, reservoir, it'll stop leaking out. Now, you shouldn't get anything coming out of this high side right here. If you do, it'll be very little. Okay, now I'm going to disconnect the uh, return side, which is your low pressure side. Now, this is going to look a little different than your application. I'm using a 8 AN fitting on here. This one here is probably going to leak quite a bit of oil, so I'm going to get this line up as high as I can, as soon as I can. Oh yeah, it was wanting to run out of there pretty fast. Okay. Okay, we're going to remove the three bolts that hold the steering gear in. Flimsy spacer. All right. I got my uh, plate here for the steering gear box built and uh, go ahead and install this. And what's nice about this, we're going to use one of the stock bolts that is going to go to that fifth hole that uh, was originally there in the frame. And that's going to hold that plate in place. So you're not going to need several hands holding the original spacer in place and then trying to get a steering gear box in there and um, trying to get a bolt started. This is going to help out quite a bit. All right. Okay, right here you can see I got the plate bolted into place. I got all three bolts stuck through there. Now I can just push those back. And then when I put the steering gear box in, we're ready to go. Okay, I got all three of them started. Okay, now I'm gonna slide on the uh, steering knuckle here. That thing only goes on one way, so it's not like you're gonna get it wrong. Big note, when you put this, your steering gear in here, make sure it's exactly in the middle of the steering, you know, for the left and the right, and that you took your steering knuckle off in the exact same position. You didn't sit there and start spinning this collar around. 
you, you do that, you're going to break the uh, clock spring in the um, steering column. And the clock spring is what controls your horn and your cruise control, your airbags, all that. There, get that bolt in, tighten that up, hook up our two lines, our pitman arm back up. Here's my front bumper plate here, and I've made an approximate measurement right here. This is where the fourth hole of the plate would be, of this plate. Of course, this is going to be on the inside of the frame. Well, instead of just putting a bolt here, drilling a hole, a space, or what they're asking to be done, I'd like to go ahead and carry this metal from this bumper on out. So I've made a template just like that. And this is approximately the metal. I'm going to cut a piece of metal just this size and weld it to the bumper plate here. This will also, this piece of metal, will cover the, this hole right here. So I'm going to after I get this put in here, I'm going to drill a hole exactly in the center. I'm going to weld a nut to the back side of this. So you'll be able to stick a bolt right through here and tighten it on down. This will make a great you know, sandwich between the two. And by the way, if you're wondering how I, I did this, um, you can just simply take a piece of construction paper or like a shoebox type cardboard and you set your piece of paper up here to get a template and you, that's all you got to do is tap that out look at it cuts it okay I've got the piece of metal cut out I did use a plasma cutter and you can see that it fits in there really nice like that right there. Um, I'm going to bevel this edge, clamp this into place, and weld it right here. Um, it is too much trouble to take the bumper off, especially by myself. All right, got the uh, piece of metal all prepped. I got a pretty good bevel right here. Got it clamped into place, and I'm going to weld this right on here, and then probably grind down the weld, and then we're going to remove the the three bolts and bolt the new plate in place just for the purpose of marking the fourth and then this other bolt hole over here. Okay. Got it welded in place. Remove the clamp here. Remove these three bolts that are holding the steering box in place. We'll bolt that into place. And then we can get the exact location of these two holes. And we'll go ahead and drill those out. Got the plate bolted on. We'll get these two holes drilled. Now, I'm just using the drill bit that is the exact same size as the hole, but only so I can mark the center. You see, I got now I can take a pilot bit and uh, drill that hole out. And then I'll drill it out to the proper size. Now it can be drilled out to the size to the this diameter right here. Okay, I've got the top hole drilled out. 
Now what's going to happen, you can see in there, okay, you can kind of see that line going across the middle. That is the unit body that we're cutting into. Okay, right, you can see it down there. The shavings are, that is where I'm cutting into the unit body. Now I know this is going to happen because if you're trying to hook up to that fourth bolt, you see how much higher it is. It actually almost halfway in between there. Now what we're going to do is cut that piece of metal out of the unibody and lay a spacer in there. And that's going to get welded in there. I, uh, I got a little uh, spacer made for that fourth hole. Now what I used was the same stuff that I used to make the plate with. It's a one inch outside diameter with a half inch hole. And the approximate width is like two inches. It's going to vary a little bit from application to application. Um, now what I did is I tack welded a bolt to it. Um, this is going to come off of course at the, after it's bolted into place and we spot weld it in. Um, this is just so I don't drop it down into the frame and then can't retrieve it again. Um, so it's just easy to drop, put it into place, which I'll show you right now. Okay. So here I can, I've got the, the initial slot cut across the frame, and you can get the bolt in there. But when you tighten it up, you're gonna, you can crush the frame a little bit. So you can see as I put this down in here, now I can pull it back out. And I've got a couple lines scribed right there where I'm going to make my cuts. Okay, and another thing, you're going to have to go ahead and remove your uh, transmission lines, take out the uh, cooling fan and the lower radiator hose to make it easier to get to this. I'm using a Dremel with a cutoff wheel. grind these corners out smooth and probably do a little grinding there on the against the frame just to make it nice and flat so we to fit that piece in there. pretty good. Now I can just take this down here, kind of check fit my piece. Now what's happening, it's not going down there where I need it to, and that's because of the thickness of the frame, right? It's happening, you can see, you know, it's the thickness of this frame right here. So my piece is made to go from the plate, my brace here, to the other side. But when it comes down, it hits this part of the frame. I'm just gonna cut a slot going across here, take out the width of the frame, just part way down. Okay, as you can see here, I just cut pretty much the thickness of the frame, and it does start about halfway through the bolt hole there. So now I should be able to lower that down in there. Uh, 
Oh yeah. Okay, now to find out if it all works, grab the bolt and put that in. Okay, I got the uh, bolt started. Now what I'm going to do is uh, clean off this area and get it ready to weld in place. Alright, we got our piece all ready to go. Slots properly made there. We're going to lower this down into place. Like that. I'm going to go ahead and get the bolt in there and install it. Bolts in. I got it torqued in. Now this, I, uh, there, it actually already wants to break off. Um, I guess I could do that. What I did is I did a little cutting on that weld. So it was just strong enough to do what I needed it to do and now I can break it off. Okay, now I'm going to run a bead down both sides.